Hey guys, I built an automatic Halloween candy dispenser. <laughs> so Halloween is just around the corner and I thought to myself why not build an automatic candy dispenser and so I did. You activate it with this button here you can also place it on the ground to step on it with your foot and then candy comes out here and when some candy comes out the sensor is triggered and the ball goes on and after 25 seconds the whole thing shuts down and you can uh, activate it again there's like three different sound effects and here we go <laughs> <laughs> in a second I will show you how it works and if you want to build it by yourself there's also a step-by-step -step tutorial afterwards I also will give away 40 PCBs if you want to build it by yourself you just need to subscribe and leave a comment and that's all for me thanks so much for watching bye bye and this is how it looks like with some better lighting And here it is without the pumpkin decoration. It's just a bucket from Home Depot because the color matches the Halloween theme. And here you go. And this is how it looks like from the inside. Normally there's a wall like this, so you can fill it up with candy to the top, but I removed it so you can see the action better. There's a turntable here which spins this way and by spinning it pushes the candy out to the hole here. And here are two sensors which are getting triggered when some candy falls over. When this happens the turntable spins backwards and prevents the other candy from falling out and also to loosen up the other candy. And that's about it. And here how it looks like. I also tried different size candies and you can pretty much use everything that will fit to the hole here, even like full size candy bars if you want to do this. If you want to build it by yourself, there's a step by step guide coming next. I will give away 40 of those PCBs if you want to build your own uh, Halloween candy dispensers. If you want to win, just like, subscribe and leave a comment and in one week I will send out all the PCBs to the winners. Okay, let's start, assemble the turntable. This is the base. I already mounted the stepper motor. You can see I have just used two screws, that's more than enough. This is the turntable. As you can see, I mounted the reinforcements here and here. First you also need like the little spacer here. And the big gear. And the lazy Susan bearing. So now the turntable is assembled. And now we need to put this on the base.
to mount the nut you have to get like a little plier or something and you need to fill it around here So to get this uh, turntable into the bucket, the best method is to flip it around. And then lower the bucket upside down. Make sure the cables are not in the way. There you go. The best way to see where you need to cut the hole is to put in the turntable and then place it on the bright light like here so you can see where the line is of the turntable. I don't know if you can see it good in the video, but here is the line. And then just put on the little exit thingy and trace around. I would suggest to go a little bit uh, lower than the turntable so the candy can go out more easily. I would say maybe, I don't know, five millimeters below the uh, turntable. It's a little bit blurry, but uh, we can always like adjust uh, the hole afterwards. It's just a good starting point. And here's the section I need to cut out. And here you go. Here's the hole. And you see we are yeah, maybe a little bit too low, but I think that's fine. If we put the exit right here, the candy f will fall out really easy. And it looks pretty good. Oops. Okay, next uh, I install this little thing that will flatten out the candy when it's going through this uh, hole here so it doesn't get uh, too stacked up and this side will force the candy to go outside the hole here. I created a little uh, paper ring here to put here inside so there's a little bit space in between and doesn't sit directly on the turntable and we can adjust the height later with this um, thing i don't know what it's called but you get the idea so we put it in here and now we need to mark where we put the holes About 7.1 There's a little bit too much plastic here but uh, we can easily Scrape this away with the exacto knife. Candy comes from here and it spins, spin, spin, and spin, 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 spin. There you go. So and that's it, so you can see how it looks from the inside. We 
can lower this so it will be flush with those things and no candy can go underneath here. Ta-da! Those are the two sensors to stop the motion when a candy will fall out. So they like this. Okay, so I disassembled the bucket again because I want to add a little maintenance opening here when everything is assembled. Uh, there's like an easy way in without disassembling everything uh, again. And for that I used the little thing we cut out for the opening here. And I already made some markings here. That's the other side and I just like made something here and here. So there's a little bit left for the screws and we can close this. So let me go to the garage and cut it out and uh, see you soon. So here's the opening. Let's also cut some, uh, drill some holes for the screws. Okay, so next thing we need to do is like drill some holes in the bottom to uh, asphyxiate uh, the whole thing so it doesn't turn around on itself and for that I already marked I don't know if you see it here and here I did this by shining a bright light from here and then I'm I put the bucket over the edge here and made the marking from beneath so you can see the uh, the stand quite nice from down there but it's really hard to film so I didn't film it and that's the two screws As you can see now it's just the motor is moving not the whole assembly here's the little circuit I made and now let's test if this still works. Okay, so now if I press the button here, it should spin in this direction. And then if the uh, sensor is triggered here, it stop because this sensor will uh, later be here and uh, triggers when some candy falls out. And then it spins a little bit backwards so that uh, other candy doesn't come out. Okay, let's test it. Oh, it looks good. And the sound is uh, extra scary for the kids. Okay, here can you see how I adjusted the height of the, of the thing, I don't know the name. Um, so it will, be flush with um, screws and also like this. So there will be a wall here. That's this part. So you can fill it up to the top with candy. some kids maybe more lucky than the other ones but let's see that looks like a successful test right so 
some kids will get like three or four and some kids will just get one but i think that's okay so this is the pumpkin i bought from uh, Lowe's, and it has already a built-in sound effect And I need to remove this plate here with the sound effect and also create a bigger hole so the bucket will fit in like this. I will use the lid for the bucket as a template. So I also decided to make a hole here because it makes refilling the candy much easier and also to uh, install the whole bucket inside of it. And for that reason, I will use the cutout we did on the bottom and use this as a lid. So I will make the hole like this. And the rest I will uh, rivet it to the pumpkin. So the top will have a place to sit on. Maybe I will use some magnets to keep it there, but I don't know yet. Yeah, I think that's fine. Okay, and here is the hole. So I finished uh, putting the ring here. And now that, oops, oh, like this. Now we have like a lid and can put in candy and install the bucket and whatnot. So I also found this little guy here that's a little skeleton. And I think it looks very funny if when the pumpkin head is like on top of it, but uh, it's not really stable. So I cut out a little hole here and on the top as well. And I found like this from an old project and I just sprayed a little black paint here on the sides and I mounted a two by four in the middle with three screws. And now this will fit perfectly. And on top will go this round thing that's like the same size as the bottom of the uh, bucket. And we'll go here and now we have a really stable base for our candy dispenser. Okay, so the pumpkin decoration I bought had also this um, little sound device in the bottom. It's like a little PCB uh, speaker and uh, switch. So I removed it from the casing here. And I made another one. Okay, so I soldered the new cables onto the PCB. This is uh, five volts ground and here's the signal. The signal needs to be grounded to activate the sound effect. So let's mount it in the new casing and see if this still works. Okay, great. Also made a little lid, which just clips on it. And there you have it. I also found this really cool bowl and it has a light effect.
and I want to trigger it when the candy falls out of the pumpkin then the light in this bowl will light up so I think it makes a nice effect it also came with like this uh, little button to test it so you put it in here and then if you press the button it will go on so I think we can use this to trigger it with the uh, Arduino as well okay so here is the bowl with the uh, gutted inserts and I installed like this relay here so I can trigger it uh, with uh, with an output from the Arduino and you get this power from here and it's the signal cable from the Arduino and it's patched through here and if, when the relay gets on it uh, connects it to the power and let's demonstrate that for you let's get 5 volt to the input you can hear the relay triggering and there you go so here's the button which will uh, activate the uh, candy dispenser it's quite big so you can easily tap it with your foot so here it's just like a spring loaded button and here is like a micro switch that will go inside here and uh, when you press here the micro switch here will activate and I also added some LEDs I had them left over from another project that's RGB LEDs and to control them I added a little Arduino Nano and this is how it looks like so when the button is on the ground it's easily to spot and I maybe fill the holes here with some epoxy to make it watertight but I don't know yet and I installed them like with a little bit of duct tape and that's it and this is how it looks assembled I hooked it up to my uh, multimeter so you should hear a beep now it works Okay, the PCB just arrived two days earlier that's great so and here is the finished PCB looks great at the end of the video I will also give away 40 of the PCBs so stay tuned and I will tell you later how to get one of those now let's assemble those here are the items needed and with the magic of video cutting ooh, 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 ooh. okay and here it is here's the Arduino here is the um, stepper motor driver here are all the terminals to connect the stuff here's for the button here's for the sensors here's for the extra um, items like the sound effect and also the the bowl and here are some exits uh, or ports not used yet for maybe future stuff to hook onto maybe some other effects and here is the power in and this is power out 5 volts and here 20 volt goes in and this is the voltage regulator it will regulate uh, the 20 volts down to 5 volts so it can support the uh, Arduino and also the, the effects like the sound effect it runs on 5 volts and also the bowl runs on 5 volts so not very complex and now let's put everything together so here's the shoot and I already installed the sensors here and here 
and on the back you can see it's not pretty but it works I used a lot of um, hot glue to fix the sensors to the chute and uh, it's dry now let's see if it still works so the LEDs go on and if you trigger the sensor it will go green Okay, so let's assemble everything and test the candy dispenser. Okay, so here is the whole thing assembled, but not uh, put together. So let's see if this works. Now we put in the power. You can see the lights come on at the button. And if you press here, Oh. And if the chocolate comes out, the ball goes on. And after 10 seconds, the ball goes out again and is ready for the next kit.